Hey, good morning, YouTubers. So, two weeks ago, wake up to a news feed, a bison attacks a vacationer in South Dakota. Lots of bikers. Immediately, I was drawn to it. Something looked familiar with that area. I'm like, hey, I've been on that exact road. I know where that area is. It's really popular for bison. And of course, you watch the video. I watch the video. I always watch the animals um, as a learning lesson, kind of like a database in the back of my head to see what prompts an attack. And that's the thing, you know, in the groups there, we have to be cognizant. Bison attack more people in the United States than I think all the other animals combined, if we, if we look at it, especially the big parks. It is so popular. You have bison, it doesn't matter whether it's Yellowstone, Custer State Park, people in groups just kind of tempt fate. And I want to go over four or five kind of rules that I apply uh, as a group, or let's say if you're solo, if you're solo backpacking, doing some photography just with one other person or something like that, you know, what are some of the things you can do to kind of look out for and keep safe? So yeah, let's get into it. All right, so first things first, let's talk about bison as a whole. Um, 1,200 to 2,000 pounds, top speed like 35 miles an hour, three times faster than the average human. You're not gonna outrun them and their nature. Now, most people look at buffalo and they're just slowly limp along. In this area where this woman was attacked, I was taking pictures last year and I noticed immediately there's, there's horns that were hooking into other animals where other animals were bleeding. They're constantly battling back and forth. This is just their nature. So they're constantly you know, pushing other, other animals and, and that's their exercise. That's kind of a thing they do. They chase other animals off and they go head to head. They don't mind smashing heads with each other. Sometimes their eyes get all messed up. So when someone gets eight to 10 yards away, like this person, 100 pounds, 200 pounds, oh, no problem. They're just gonna throw that person 10, 20 feet in the air. That's what they like to do in some ways, believe it or not. That's just the thing they do, they clash. So let's talk first, let's jump into the group situation. How to keep yourself safer in that kind of thing. Cause I'm always back from the group and with the camera ready, actually I'm gonna feel bad about this, but if someone gets thrown, I want that photo because that's probably gonna be my most popular photo. <laughs> so let's get in the other things. All right, let's talk about safety in the group. Um, you're in this place, right? You, you stop, a lot of the Buffalo sightings are side of the road, most people don't wanna get out. And there's this emboldened, this mob mentality that always takes place. And it's so frustrating. I know you guys have seen it. Everyone stops, everyone gets out of their cars. In that same spot, I have photos where that lady was attacked, I have photos of other people last year getting out. And 2007 Yellowstone, I have photos of people getting out so close to the buffalo, they're like right on top of them. And so that's the thing, you know, not to look at it. So if you see a photographer, let's say he's got a really expensive camera, $6,000 camera set up, and he's 50 yards back. Don't you think like this guy might be a little bit more invested in, and has done a little more photography than the person up there with the cell phone? but it doesn't matter. Like people see this, people just get more bold and they're like, ah, I'm gonna outprove you. So you always have the lead dog, the person that will take, in the group, take more risk than everyone else and, and just cut people off, whether they're shooting photography or just doing whatever. They're gonna show off a little bit. Like, I'm not afraid of this. But the thing is, is there's that other situation where you don't wanna be in the center. And that's where this person really made the mistake. You have to understand that group that herd changes forms all the time. It's constantly slowly migrating this way and that way. So this person gets in five to eight yards and then the actual animals kind of morphed around her and you get in the center and that's rule number two, don't get in the center at all. Always be on the outskirts because you're gonna be between two animals. This person happened to be between actually a baby and the mother came across the road and smacked her, ran her over and that's the situation. Very tough. I, to be honest, I've been in the situation where I'm shooting photography in an area and then all of a sudden another herd comes in and boxes me in. And it's scary because you're like, you're in a bad spot. But at least you realize that you gotta find yourself, get yourself out. But in this instance, these people didn't even care. <laughs> they, they were just like, it doesn't bother me. And I'm like, it probably should because someone's gonna get rolled. 
<laughs> anyway, you'll see dozens of people do that, right? Like, not just one, like, because it's that whole mob mentality. Like, oh, nothing can happen to me. I'm in a group of people until you get a stampede of 200 bison running through your, your camp area, right? So, just a thing to look for. Now, let's get into uh, solo shooting. Like, if you're in out in the field and, you, and you're in Buffalo territory, some of the things to look for because that's actually oh more scary for me because you kind of run into them by accident that kind of thing things to look for all right so let's talk about solo photography not the group we got rid of the group you're on your own you might have a pamphlet you might have the area so first things first you want to know the area traveling at night can be a little dangerous in these areas i've gone in areas where i didn't know there was buffalo didn't even know they existed in this area so it wasn't on the top of my list walking through an area in the middle of the night and I see these black shades kind of moving around and I thought they were bushes at first and then they started moving and then I realized I was in bad shape so being familiar with the area but if you know that buffalo are in the area that's a really good first tip so photographing buffalo in a big open field um, I generally don't chase them or like because let's say you have visibility of two miles some of these pastures are just wide open I don't go out and chase them in this big field because I'm the only bean pole that's kind of coming closer. So if you have animals that are territorial or want to push things around, you're automatically at a disadvantage. You can't outrun them. You're like a mile from any kind of cover. Um, you stick out. So I generally just don't do that. Most of the wildlife photographers I see taking photos of, of buffalo are they have some backing. They have an escape route. And I think that's the biggest thing is if you're going to do this, have an escape route to where you have concealment cover and then you can just kind of move move out of the situation so you don't get hooked in because generally you have one herd two herds they kind of move in they form around but if you always have an outway we can get some terrain that you can kind of slick back through or trees that you can get out all the better and that's really the situation is you always want an out and to be able to, to not be the center focus of their attention. You just want them to do whatever they're, they're doing and you can hide in the weeds or you can do whatever and you know that your back's covered and get out. Now, if you're hiking, there's a different situation because a lot of times like in this vegetation here, it's so high that buffalo can just lay down a lot of times in the, in the day. So if you're just pushing through a lot of vegetation really fast, you are at risk, right? So some of the things to look for, obviously, is tracks. People, people don't realize, like, the buffalo tracks, their waste. Um, if, the, if the waste is wet, obviously, it's fresher than if it's completely dry. Look for streams. When you're crossing streams, a lot of times you'll see just an absolute mess. And if it's a stream, it's always moving dirt and everything filling in the old track. So if it's an old track, you'll just kind of see it there. But if it's a fresh track, you're gonna see it really deep. You're gonna see it really, really messy. So that's the thing. You know, you realize when you're in heavy cover, that's my biggest fear, generally. If I'm walking through some area and you're, you don't wanna walk up on a buffalo, just all of a sudden like open, open the weeds and boom, you know, open this and you're 10 feet away from it. You startled it, it's probably gonna startle you back in that kind of situation. So there's the group that you can follow. You have fields where you have really high vegetation that the, the buffalo can hide in. You have to be cognizant of that. And there's the other one that I see some people possibly make some mistakes, and that is the solo buffalo. Um, generally, buffalo are group, they're in herds, right? But you'll see a solo one just by himself. Question, why is he by himself, right? Or her? Is he sick, old, agitated, not feeling that great? If you're the only thing that's coming up to it and you're visible, it might feel threatened if it's hurt. Much like a dog, if they get hurt and you touch them, they kind of yip at you. And normally they would never do that. But if a buffalo is not feeling that great and you're kind of coming up on it and you're the only thing visible to it, it might take out its aggression on you. So that's just another, another thing to be cognizant of. People think, oh, look, and, and the, the buffalo's attention is only on you. So if you have a, if a herd, if it's in a herd, it's got attention on other buffalo and you. So there's just one extra risk there I think you're taking. It's not that you can't do it, but obviously long lenses, you don't really need to get that close. You know, you can get 50 yards, 100 yards or whatever. So as I mentioned, 
Custer State Park is a hundred yard, supposed to be a hundred yard limit. And then Keystone, or I should say Yellowstone is 25 yards. Anyway, I hope this helps guys. It's kind of funny, got a lot of, it just doesn't change, you know, these parks. Tourists, gotta love them, but man, they take a lot of risk and uh, they're there for the excitement, I guess. Anyway, I hope to see you guys next week. Appreciate it.